I first met Catherine Mansfield in 1903 at Queen's College, Harley Street. I was 15, she was 14 years old. Our friendship, formed at school, lasted until her death. In 1906, K.M. returned home to New Zealand. But two years later, she won her freedom from her family and came back to London, determined to be a writer. Her father was a successful banker in Wellington. He gave her an allowance of 104 pounds a year. It was not enough. She was just 20, impetuous, and soon in love with a young violinist Garnet Trowell. Nor was she without other admirers, among them George Bowden, a singing teacher of solid worth and devotion. But it was with Garnet that Kaya made her first dive into life. Fortune has befriended Veronique, who is now Helene. She has managed to discover perfect happiness, you see. I've got a hand of love who is all the world to me. And I've got a gallant captain who is all the world to me. For Helene and Veronique, this is a happy day. Joy and love. How's my little love birds this morning? Beautiful day. Here, your band leader's got a cheek. You're all called for 11.30. Never heard of such a thing, especially when you show in Saturday. Are we going on to Manchester? Cancelled. You're not breaking even. Pity, really, because it's a lovely show. I always cry at Veronique. Lovely. Well, come on, jump about. Your legs will get hard. Miss Green, hurry up in that lobby. There's others waiting with legs plaited. Ooh. Ooh. Katie? I felt, ooh, garlic. You couldn't be. I could be, couldn't I? Oh, Katie. Better. Hmm, funny nose. Did you hear what she said? We finish on Saturday. Isn't that good? We can go back to London. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> You'd splash more. Hmm? Use a spoon, really dig in. You taste the metal. I don't. I enjoy dipping slowly. Taste if the yolk runs oh, over. Oh, darn it. I can't help how I feel. Nor can I. Is that another letter from Bowden? Yes, he's devoted to me. Oh, Giorgio Bowden. Nome di lui si amato. I thought I recognised the writing. Are you looking at the other side? No. Because if you're beginning I to try... I the envelope. I was You're it. very particular about getting sticky with egg, but you can get sticky with people. Right. Katie, what's the matter with you? I don't know. <sighs> oh, well. Thank goodness we finish on Saturday. Mm. We, uh, We won't be able to, uh, Back home at my parents, you know. We can get a flat. What with? We won't be earning. I've got an allowance. I'm going to do my recitations at parties. 
Sleeping together, how tired you were, how warm our room, how the firelight spread on the walls and ceiling and great white beds. Is this about us? Oh, really? Garnet, you've no feeling for literature at all. I don't interrupt you when you're playing your violin. Go on. No. What is it? Try. Oh. All the other artists are getting up a protest. Say they've been treated like cattle. Well, I mean, the manager really ought to put up the notice. What notice? What matter, Custom? How long have you been in the business? This wicked management. Just not bothered. Fellow artists, oh, they're up in arms. You should just hear that contract go. Fortissimo. I'm glad the show's over. I want to go home. Glad? Oh, then you're not a trooper, are you? <laughs> oh, dear. Don't you let on to the others. They'll be furious. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> You're not <laughs> Do you, uh, George Bowden, take Catherine Mansfield Beecham for your lawful wedded wife? I do. And do you, Catherine Mansfield Beecham, take George Bowden for your lawful wedded husband? Yes. I do. I do. I declare oh. you man and wife. <clears throat> yes. It um, is now customary for the parties to embrace. Yes. give your dreadful hat to the chambermaid, mustn't we? It's not at all suitable for a girl about to be married. No, mother. When do I meet your fiancé? I don't know. My dear child, you must cheer up. Your father won't necessarily oppose your marriage. Not if I find Mr. Bowden suitable. Oh. And I think I probably shall, since it is, after all, my daughter who has chosen him. Though your letters did perturb us, darling. He seems to lack background. Are you ill? No. Oh. You've been worrying, haven't you? That's what it is. Well, you mustn't. I'm here now, and I'm sure I shall like George. It's too late to like him, Mother. Or dislike him. I married him in March. Don't be absurd. I did, and I left him. I left him the next day. OK. I didn't tell you because I couldn't. If I'd telegraphed the boat, it wouldn't have turned round, would it? Just because of my stupidity. And you'd have... Oh, Mother, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. George did love me, but I couldn't. I just couldn't love him. <laughs> is to write me such kind letters. <laughs> so, you're a married... unmarried woman. I don't know what I am. I can't sleep. I have to take very long to sleep. I'm so afraid of the dark. I never used to be. I get so frightened, I can't sleep. You'll be safe here with me, darling. Here? Yeah, but, Leslie, I've got a flat in Maida Vale. So you say. <laughs> and I understand that Maida Vale is not at all a suitable district for two young girls. No, you'll stay here with me until I decide what is best to do. Especially as I am not in any way convinced that Leslie is the right influence for you. Mother, Leslie's my only friend. Exactly. Clearly, London doesn't suit you at all. <laughs> we shall have to find somewhere healthier. <clears throat> somewhere discreet. With good, clean air. <laughs> Bavaria, perhaps. I can't go there. Darling, I shall decide what is best for you. 
But I don't like anything German. Is your husband's favorite meat? I'm afraid I really don't. But how long have you been married? Three years. But oh, you cannot be in earnest. You could not have kept house as his wife for one week without knowing that fact. I really never asked him. He's not at all particular about his food. No wonder there is a repetition in England of that dreadful decadence in Paris. How can you expect a woman to keep her husband if she doesn't know his favorite food after three years? Ah, bread soup. That is what I need. My margin has not been in order for several days. Oh, oh does. And the right consistency. <sighs> Uh, I am a good cook myself. How interesting. Oh, yes. When one is not married, it is necessary. Uh, as for me, I have had all I wanted from women without marriage. <laughs> now, at nine o'clock, I make myself an English breakfast, but not much. Four slices of bread, two eggs, two slices of cold ham, one plate of soup, two cups of tea. But that is nothing to you, English trenchermen. Yes. All I ever have is a cup of coffee. Oh. <laughs> Impossible. All English eat enormous breakfast. It is a, a known characteristic of that nation. Mm. You don't really eat so much. Good soup and baker's bread and pig's flesh and tea and coffee and stewed fruits and honey and eggs and cold fish and kidneys and hot fish and liver? Certainly. I myself have seen it when I was living in a hotel in Leicester Square. Yeah. It was a good hotel, but they could not make tea. Oh, now. now, that's one thing I can do. I make very good tea. The great secret is to warm the teapot. Warm the teapot. What do you warm the teapot for? Ah, that's very good. One does not eat the teapot, I suppose. <laughs> I eat the crowd with great pleasure, but now I have eaten so much of it that I cannot retain it. So I am forced to... What a pity about the rain. <laughs> uh. Did you get up early? At five o'clock, I walked for ten minutes in the wet grass. Again, I go to bed. At half past five, I fell asleep. And at seven, I made an overbody washing. Again, in bed I go. At eight o'clock, I had a cold water poultice. And at half past eight, I drank a cup of mint tea. At nine o'clock, I had some more coffee and began my cure. <laughs> Pass me the sour cup, please. Do you not eat it? Uh, no, thank you. I still find it a little strong. Ah? <laughs> Is it true you are a vegetarian? Why, yes. I haven't eaten meat for three years. Impossible. <laughs> Have you any family? No. There, now, you see, that's what you're coming to. Whoever heard of having children upon vegetables? <laughs> it is not possible. But you never have large families in England now. I suppose you are too busy with your super getting. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have had nine, and they are all alive, thank God. Fine, healthy babies. So after the first one was born, I had to... A, a wonderful nine. A wonderful? Not at all. A friend of mine had four at the same time. 
her husband was so pleased, he gave a supper party and had them placed on the table. Oh, oh, of course, yes, yes. she was very proud. Germany is the home of the family. Yeah. That is fine. The home of the family. We give three cheers to that, yeah. like you yeah. English. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Hip, hip. Hurrah! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? Why does he always eat alone? Oh, he is a baron. But, poor soul, he can't help it. Help it? Must being a baron debar him from the pleasures of intellectual intercourse? Oh, you do not understand. He is one of the first barons. He comes every year for his nerves. He has never spoken to any of the guests yet. Now, in England, in your boarding house, one does not find the first class as in Germany. Perhaps he's shy. He knows his position, and we know ours. Uh, how long are you remaining here? I don't know exactly. I have to be back in London in September. Of course. You will visit München. Well, I don't think I shall have the time. You see, it's important for me not to break into my cure. <laughs> but you must go to München. You have not seen Germany until you have been to München. All the exhibitions, all the art and soul life of Germany are in München. There is the Wagner Festival in mm -hmm. August and Mozart and a Japanese collection of pictures. Mm -hmm. and. There is the beer. Ah, <laughs> ah, you do not know what good beer is until you have been to München. Mm. Why, I see fine ladies every afternoon, mm. but fine ladies, I tell you, drinking glasses so high. <laughs> when I drink a great deal of München beer, I sweat so. When I'm here, in the fields before my baths, I sweat, but I enjoy it. But in the town, <laughs> it is not at all the same thing. I suppose uh, you are frightened of the invasion too, huh? I have read in the newspapers how afraid the English are. I assure you we are not afraid. Well, then you ought to be. You have no army at all. A, a few little boys with their, with their veins full of nicotine poisoning. <laughs> but don't be afraid. There is no need. We do not want England. If we did, we would have had her long ago. <laughs> we really do not want you. We certainly do not want you. The arrow goes to the post office. Does he? Every day, like a clock. The first class keep in touch with each other by letter. Right. Ah, cherries. There is nothing like cherries for producing free saliva. Psychologically, I understand your refusal. It is your innate feminine delicacy in preferring etherealized sensations. <laughs> Or perhaps you do not care to eat worms. All cherries contain worms. I once made a very interesting experiment with a colleague of mine at the university. We bit into four pounds of the best cherries and did not find one specimen without a worm. No. <laughs> but what would you? As I remarked them afterwards, dear friend, it amounts to this. If one wishes to satisfy the desires of nature, one must be strong enough to ignore the facts of nature. <laughs> the conversation is not out of your depths. No. See, what a fat one. That is almost a mouthful in itself. Down it goes, firm and all. Yes. Forgive me. But although not of the first class, I too have some letters to post. You will require an umbrella. It is dogging and catting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 
Pardon me, but do I overhear is that you also go to the post office? Well, yes. Uh, so do I. Uh, you will permit that I offer you the shelter of my umbrella? Well, that's very kind of you, but I... It would be my pleasure. Thank you. Astounding. Unique. But a charming girl. I will send her a bouquet. She is clearly of distinction. Cab must come soon. Must it? I'm a fatalist about cabs. You hope too much, that's why you never get one. It was that truck that did it, LM. It was that loss with the baby. You don't have to tell me, Catherine, if you don't want oh, to. Oh, don't be so squeamish. I was tidying my room at Vorishofen, and I tried to lift it into the cupboard, but it was too heavy, and... <sighs> the pain was quite unbelievable. I still didn't feel quite right. Oh, you will, darling. Now that you're back... Yes. At least before lifting the trunk, I managed to produce some stories. About Germany? Not quite. More about me having to be there for a time. And in honor of your newly published book, we have a red plum soup, a Bavarian delicacy. <laughs> and now, I want you to meet the editor of Rhythm, uh, Jack Middleton Murray, our brilliant young Bergsonian from Oxford. Murray, Yekaterina Mansfield. W.L. always insists on giving me strange Russian connotations. I really don't know why. Oh, you do, you do. It is because you're a perfect Mongolian. <laughs> Whatever that may be. Uh, wayward, cynical, unknowable, like the woman in your German stories. Oh, dear, I'm not really. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Mansfield? W.L. has dubbed our meeting a necessary confrontation. Did you know that? No, but he's a terrible dubber. I name occasions, that's all. <laughs> I did so very much admire the second story which you sent to Rhythm. It's quite easily the best we've received so far. Thank you. Why do you call your magazine Rhythm? I like it as a title. It's really... Because I want every contribution whether fiction, drama, art, or criticism, to have its roots below the surface so that everything in it has the rhythmical echo of the life with which it is in touch. I mean, both in purity and even brutality. It's just that everything must be real. Yes, yes, I agree with you. That's my aim, too. I live in. Very much. It's a good place to work. And not dear, really. Fifty-two pounds a year. It's better, don't you think, to spend the money on rooms and go short on other things? Better be hungry than sordid. Oh, yes, I agree. Mm. I mean, it doesn't matter being poor, provided one can be poor in one's own way. By the way, I've uh, got a job. You have? Really? Really. That's all you're doing. I, I, but for you, I'd never have gone to the Gazette. And it's in advance for work. Five pounds! <laughs> you see, look, the editor's signature. Oh, I'm glad. Oh. So my leaving Oxford isn't such a dead barkle after all, is it? I should think not. You're a literary gent on the Westminster Gazette. That ought to rhyme. I don't think I've ever liked the look of a cheque so much. 
I have to begin by writing paragraphs, seven and six each. They have to be in every morning by the first post. The more I write, the more I earn. And if they go well, I move on to reviewing, he says. And all because of you. Because you insisted that I ought to go and talk to them. I'm sure I wouldn't have on my own. I wonder. I'd like to think so. I shall begin looking for a room tomorrow. Not more than ten shillings, though, because I... You could stay here. Here? Why not? You could have this room. We could move the piano. Do we be our lodger? Look, exactly. You could use the kitchen and bathroom. But I wouldn't charge you ten shillings a week, because I'd still have two rooms and you only one. Would seven and six be too much? I, I think... think you'll find it better than anything else at ten shillings. I know rooms in London. Listen, do you mean it? Well, of course. Why ever not? <laughs> no, I'm absolutely convinced that falling in love is a complete mistake. I mean, for anybody, everybody. Because of your Paris experiences? Because of that, I mean, that was an unhappy dream. You know, I'd given up hope that this sort of thing could be. What sort of thing? Well, the way we are, you and I. What sort of thing do you think we are? Well, we're fond of each other and we're not in love. No, we're not in love and it is nice. What do you mean by being in love? I mean, the sort of thing I felt in Paris for Marguerite. Now, the feeling I have for you is, is like what I felt for Marguerite before I fell in love with her. You mean before she was your mistress? And then you fell in love with her, and then... That spoiled everything somehow. I wonder why. I don't know. I do sometimes wonder about our, our happiness. I mean, I, I feel it should last forever. Why don't you believe it will last forever? For toujours. I'm frightened to believe that. Forever. <laughs> I'm frightened of the very words. You haven't much faith, have you? Have you? Yes. Sometimes I think I'm a perfect little mine of faith, only I'm not quite certain what it is I believe in. Why don't you make me your mistress? Oh! What a strange way of putting it. <laughs> strange and remote. Oh. oh, I I feel it would spoil everything. Good night, Murray. Good night, Mansfield.
had but two little wings and were a little feathery bird, to you I'd fly, my dear. But thoughts like these are idle things, and I stay here. God's thunder! Natural, she would, dashing in like that. No hat, no gloves, in the evening, too. Well, if she can stare at me, I can stare at her. Golly gosh, her hair. Did I read that or make it up? Oh, Lord. Must speak. Must. Raise my hat. Oh, no. It's in the other carriage. Oh, dear. I say, I'm... I'm most awfully sorry. Why? Crashing in like that. Without my hat, even. Your hat? And then staring at you. Well, you must think I'm mad, but I'm not. It's just I'm a terrible starer. <laughs> it's an awful fault of mine. It doesn't matter. What is happening to me? Can't leave it like this. I, I got to the station with ten minutes to spare, you see. I left my things, my hat and my portfolio, in a smoker. I, I do smoke sometimes, actually. I was having a look at the bookstall when the whistle... Oh, gosh, I haven't paid for it. Oh, Lord, what am I... Pay tomorrow. Yes, of course. What a thing to do. nothing valuable in your portfolio. Oh, no. Uh, only some architect's drawings I was taking home from the office. Rather glad I lost my hat, as a matter of fact. Been hurting me all day. Yes, it's left a mark. Has it? So it has. Gosh. Gosh, isn't life wonderful? List. You can't be, you're too... I get out here. You can't. I must. Oh, oh, look here. Shan't I see you again? I must. Well, I... I come down every evening. You do? Oh, good. You really do. Oh, but it's the weekend. So I shan't see you again till Monday. If I ever do.
Thank you. My hat and my... It seems so silly not knowing your name. Edna. Mine's Henry. Is it hot? Rather. I paid for the book. Good. Everything in perfect order now. Henry? Have you ever been in love before? No. Never. Have you? No. Oh, the weekend's been agony. And all today at the office. And just now. Why, I looked in every carriage before you... <laughs> <laughs> Just agony. It's extraordinary. I feel as if I've known you for years. So do I. Oh. We mustn't let anyone else in, must we? No. This carriage is quite full enough. It's as if I've swallowed a butterfly and it's fanning its wings. Just here. I made up my mind I didn't care for men at all. Well, all the girls at the college, they were... You're at college? Yes, secretarial college. I'm in an architect's office, up 130 stairs. We're safe. As long as you don't come dashing in. <laughs> <laughs> do you like your office? No, of course not. I don't want to do anything, do you? No, I hate the college. Edna, would you take off your hat? Take off my hat? Oh, yes. It's your hair. I'd give anything to see your hair. Why? It isn't really... Oh, it is. Please. the loveliest thing in the world. People generally laugh. Such an absurd colour. Oh, they can't. It's gold. Marigold. That's how I sit when I'm angry. I can feel my hair burning me up. Is it silly of me? No. No, not a bit. It's your weapon against all the dull, horrid things. However did you know that? I just did. Yes, you did. I know about you, and you know about me. Yes, I do. We found each other simply by being natural, haven't we? Yes. Oh, Edna. Oh, we'll be in that tunnel in a minute. Edna. Can I just touch your hair? Please. No.
you ask me to let you hold my hand or, or kiss me, I could kill myself for not doing it, for not letting you. I don't know why I don't even... I can't even understand it myself. I feel if we once did that, that it would all be changed. We wouldn't be... be children anymore. You do understand me, don't you? Henry? Tell me you understand. Yes. Yes, I, I think I do. But you're not going to be frightened anymore, are you? We'll forget. We'll bury the bogey here. Just here. Here. Done. Buried. You see? But will it make you love me less? No. Nothing could. Nothing on earth could do that. Oh. Thank you, Henry. Tell me again about the house we'll have over there. We mustn't talk about it anymore. Why not? It'll turn into a dream. Oh, we ought to be living there now, not be waiting. It's dangerous to wait for things. They only go further and further away. But, Henry, you do have faith, don't you? I mean, you're absolutely certain we will have a house and everything we want, aren't you? Not enough. I haven't enough faith. If only we weren't so young. Edna. Edna. I can't. I must. I can't. No, I can't go on being hungry like this. Edna? Edna! Edna? Edna! Such beauties. I've never seen such beauties. We ought to find somewhere for tea. You'd like these. Thank you. Is the young lady your sister? Yes. There's a likeness. I suppose you don't happen to know anyone who wants a cottage. My auntie's taken ill and left me hers. I want to let it. For... for a long time, or...? Depends. I might know someone. Could we look at it? Oh, it's only a step down the road. I'll fetch you the key. The little one with the apple tree. Will you come?
like it. There'll be a moon in two teas. The trees are full of angels and sugar almonds. And, and but the light's awfully deceptive. with you today. I do love you. Hold me, Henry. <gasps> I've tried everything to tell you I wanted you to kiss me after all. I've quite got over this morning's feeling of not wanting to. Oh, you're perfect. 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 Fifty-nine minutes. No more looking at the time. Just wait. Calmly. Because waiting is a sort of heaven, too. Darling, did you know a cottage could stand on tiptoe? Well, this one can. You'll see how in one hour and 58 minutes. Oh, Edna. Oh, darling, come quickly. Now I do have faith. I feel just like God. Aren't you going to open it? There's no need.